Hello? Hello? Do, 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 do. Is this thing on? Hello, YouTube. My name is Andrew Slusar. I'm from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. I recently moved out to the West Coast in Vancouver, British Columbia. So why I'm here? Well, quite frankly, I'm kind of bored. And I thought, why don't I show you something that's close to my heart, close to home, which is the love and art of baking. I thought, you know, it's way easier to make it from home. Um, it's better for you, it's healthier, you know exactly what's going in. And ultimately, you look like a badass with these t loaves, you know. Hey, I've got a loaf for you. Like, hey, can I casually offer you a loaf, right? You know, you look, you look awesome. I just casually made these in my spare time. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly what to do. I find the biggest head start here is to measure out all your ingredients prior to assembly. Um, this allows you to clean as you cook, something my mother taught me from a young age. And it's just used for overall better efficiency. So I've got my five ingredients here, uh, primarily five to six cups of uh, all-purpose flour. I use five and a half and I sift it, so I'll probably get closer to six cups with that. Uh, we also live in a wetter climate on the west coast, so I have primarily more flour because all the moisture is going to get locked up in there. So let's start. I'm going to start here with one tablespoon of sugar and this is one tablespoon out of the measured half a cup of sugar. I'm going to take two cups of warm water, more on the warmer, hotter side. And I'm going to take the tablespoon and dissolve it, dissolve the sugar into the water. Get that nice and dissolved. And then I'm going to take my one and a half tablespoons of active dry yeast. So this yeast is in its name. It needs to be activated with the sugar and the water to take effect. So I'm going to put that in there. Opportunities I passed up. But all that up. And I'm gonna put this into a warm space. So for me, I like to heat an oven up to about 110, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Put pop that in the oven. Science take effect and time that baby for five minutes. Alright, five minutes later. The sugar, water, and yeast mixture is, should be all foamy. Here's my baby. As you can see, it's all foamy. That's when you know that the proofing, as they call it, process is in effect. So now, at this very moment, I'm going to take my remaining half a cup of sugar that we used earlier. I don't know what he's put that in. Just going to have to wait. The one and a half teaspoons of salt. I choose molten salt because that's all I have. The bougie salt, as they call it. And a quarter cup of oil. Add those three in and dissolve that. So you're just adding to that creamy foam. It smells quite yeasty in here, I may say. All right, so we have reached the point, which is the most fun part for me as a baker. We use the flour that we set aside earlier between six or five cups. We add in one cup at a time into our mix master and on the lowest setting we let the flour bind with our sugar, water, oil and yeast mixture. 
And as we start to add in one cup at a time, we start to notice the tackiness of the bowl. Ideally, you want a dough that's going to pull away at all the sides around. So essentially clean the insides of the bowl. Is that the best way to describe it? I don't know. That's the way I do it. This is my first video, so can you cut me some slack? Come on. Go easy on me, please. So once we start it to see that it makes a dough ball formation, we set the timer for seven minutes. We knead it for seven minutes, and this will allow you to prep along the way. So my mixture isn't quite dough-like yet. I'm three cups in. We're gonna go for a fourth. We're going for a fourth. Oh yeah, we're going. Isn't so bad. So no. Now I'm starting to see it come into that formation. All right. This is the point. I'm going to set my timer. We're going to use seven minutes, not eight. Not six and a half, not six and three quarters, seven minutes. Trust me on this. All right, so one thing I do have to say is while you're monitoring your dough for seven minutes, you should keep note. If it is clinging to the sides of the bowl, that's great. You want that sticky consistency. Um, if it's hard and dough-like, like a rock, you should add a touch bit more water. Um, if it's not clearing the sides of the bowl, a touch bit more flour. So play with the consistency. Like right now, it's looking a tad bit wet to me. I'm just gonna stop it, add in the slightest, literally a dusting of flour, and keep going. Just play as you go. So keep in mind within that seven minute time frame that the consistency may change and you'll just fine tune it as you go. It's nothing to worry about. Don't stress, okay? Don't stress. It's not worth it. My time is off. Okay, let's get going. All right, so we're turning our mixer off. And I'm transferring the sticky dough into my well oiled pool. Cover it in a damp cloth, and then you are going to put it into a warm space that could be somewhere in your home. For me, it's going to be my oven at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And let it sit there for approximately one hour until doubled in size. So here's when you're going to watch the yeast use its true leavening power and just make it double so nicely. Welcome back to the segment. So this has been an hour later. This is the byproduct of having your dough in your either warm place or an oven, um, you will see here it's doubled in size. So I'm going to do two things right now. I'm going to start out by lightly flouring the, the countertop surface. Step number two, I'm going to flour my hands a little bit. And now I'm going to punch the dough down. So watch it deflate. Get all that air that it's created. So now I'm going to lightly scrape the sides of the bowl. We're going to get this little stinker out of here. Gosh, you haven't felt warm dough before. You are missing out, my friend. What is up next? We're just gonna have to wait and see. And I'm gonna need it for one minute. Just 
getting it into its place. It's quite fun, I must say, going through the dough. You know, you can really get into a groove. And just have fun with it. You know, baking is supposed to be about experimenting and having fun. And now, taking my beautiful dough baby, I'm gonna take a sharp knife and I'm gonna slice it as best as I can down the middle to make it somewhat even. I'm gonna put each into a loaf pan. And the thing about this loaf pan, so mine is the non-stick, so I actually don't need to grease mine, uh, but it is recommended with this recipe that you do grease your pan, so if it's glass, it's another different kind of uncoated, ungreased metal. Um, but I can get away with this. I've tried this out many times and this seems to work best for me. So now I'm gonna take these two loaf pans, I'm gonna put them back into my warm oven at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Let them sit for another 30 minutes until they've risen at least one inch over the loaf pans themselves. So we're gonna wait it out, see what happens. While that's going on, I'm preheating my oven to 350 degrees Celsius. So, let's see what happens next. All right, so as you can see, we have got here two risen loaves about an inch high above the pan. This is after 30 minutes. So look how like loafy and beautiful they are. So what I like to do for a visual effect is take a little bit of all-purpose flour in a sifter and just lightly tap, 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 tap. It's the little things that count. <laughs> so then here you have nicely dusted loaves. So I'm gonna pop these babies into the oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, between 30 and 40 minutes. For me, it's 30 on the dot. Uh, I like to double check. If you have an oven probe, double check with an oven probe. Uh, hook it in. If you get an internal temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit, stop it. That's when you know it's cooked. We'll see you shortly. All right, ladies and gents, as you can see here, our loaves are out of the oven. They look spectacular. I wish that you were in this kitchen right now because I swear they smell amazing and I am not embellishing by any means. They have a beautiful golden crust. Um, the flour on top is a nice little touch and you can use them with anything. Like you can, you know, if you're, you have kids, you can pack a kid's lunch with homemade bread. How look at these loaves. I mean, how much better can you get? If you're looking for the full recipe, check me out at www.thesluz.com and I look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, uh, yeah. Carry